uh, the main thing that's going on today is that uh, we have a bunch of Tesla cooling pods lying uh, on the ground and that's because I've disassembled uh, a large part of a Tesla uh, cooling loom uh, and uh, we're putting together the uh, thermal management system for this battery uh, because it really will be needing it quite soon, it's getting cold outside and uh, you can see all the condensation everywhere including on the battery case uh, so we want to get a little bit of heat of it into this thing uh, so that it'll stay uh, reasonably warm. Uh, so, uh, we have the cooling uh, liquid hookups over there uh, with not a lot of room to spare, but uh, that's what we have to work with. Uh, so I think I have most of the things I need uh, right here. So we have a Tesla cooling pump. Uh, we have uh, somewhere around here a uh, normal 230 volt block heater. And uh, this is a 550 watt rated, a uh, completely stupid heating element, uh, uh, which uh, I'm going to run over the 72 volt battery for about 50 watts of power. Uh, now that's uh, not a lot of heating, uh, but this is an insulated box which uh, should not lose uh, heat all that quickly, and I can add some insulation on top when I put the case together as well. So 50 watts, uh, I think, should be pretty reasonable uh, for keeping this battery you know about 10 degrees uh, warm or so. To hook this up I have a bunch of these angled lines and a, a ridiculous amount of uh, clamps, adapters, uh, reductions and uh, T-splices. Uh, so the plan right now is to get uh, uh, a few of these adapters hooked up uh, to s put these two bo boxes in series. Uh, so we're gonna have incoming water uh, or outgoing, I, I don't know which way. That's gonna be it's going to be out going actually there because the pump is going to be sucking in that direction. Uh, so we're going to have out from this module, then into this module. Into this module is going to go to out from this module. And then finally the pump is going to go into the heater, which is going to make a 90 degree turn and go back there. And somewhere along this top piece we're going to put a T uh, so that uh, we get uh, some uh, possibility uh, to have an expansion vessel. Uh, this thing is not going to have as big uh, thermal fluctuations as like a car engine, so we don't need a very big expansion vessel, but I do want something. Uh, so I'm probably just going to take like some random uh, piece of tubing, uh, plug the end somehow. I actually don't have a plug, need to figure that out. Uh, I'll plug the end and uh, just let some air stay like, you know, like that-ish. So we'll have a bit of air here which can compress uh, just as uh, this thing sees thermal cycles. You know, at, at worst, this thing is going to see about, actually about 60 degrees of change. Uh, if this thing dies in the middle of winter, it might go down to minus 20. It's, it's a really, really hot summer day. It might, might go up to 40. So we have a 60 degrees Celsius range there. Now, thankfully, we don't have any uh, boiling or steaming or pressure issues because we don't have anything that's going to be uh, trying to get the water to boil off. So uh, that that's really reducing our pressure compared to a, a combustion engine. Uh, but yeah, right now I'm working on getting the two packs hooked together, so I'm going to cut these up, use a bit of pipe in between them just to uh, connect two of these uh, right ang angles together, and uh, then we're going to hook the packs up, and uh, then we can work from there. Uh, so the uh, outer di diameter of these tubes is about 15, 16 millimeters. I think these are 16 millimeters inside diameter pipes. I have no idea. I don't think it says we just went to the store and just shoved some on and these fit. Uh, this should be, uh, I think, 60 millimeter outer diameter tube, which is uh, fitting just fine into them. Uh, the hookups for the pump and the heater are 19 millimeters, and I have some uh, reductions here, uh, which uh, uh, bring the uh, 16 mil up to 19 mil, so these are going to go like between there and where that's going to be really tight. So this is going to get exciting before we're done. Well, it's yeah, starting to look like the car seen from Titanic here, all steamy, uh, but it really is getting steamy because we're getting somewhere. So this monstrosity is our coolant pump heater and uh, expansion vessel connector combo unit. Uh, this thing <laughs> is a work of art, uh, to be sure. Uh, so 
This is going to be the inlet to the pump, goes through a tiny tube up to block heater, it goes to the expansion vessel, the uh, connector, and then out to the pack. And uh, down here in the pack area, we've also got uh, quite a bit of plumbing down, in fact, uh, all of it. So you can see uh, my plans here, where we have the outlet at the bottom uh, and uh, the inlet at the top. I would prefer to go the other way because uh, convection currents and stuff, but it's just not feasible. Uh, it, it wouldn't work. Uh, and our jumper between the top and bottom module there. So this is just two of those angle pieces uh, cut fairly short with a bit of uh, PVC pipe in between clamped together and then feeding into the uh, inlet of the or other outlet of the uh, top pack there. So uh, we have both the packs in a series string. Uh, and uh, really all that's left to do is put the final clamp on there and uh, install this device. Now to make everything fit, uh, I want to keep it as compact as possible. Uh, I've actually had to cut, uh, this is a reduction from these 16mm uh, uh, up to uh, the 19mm. Uh, and. Uh, now this used to be about a, a centimetre longer. Uh, this T-splitter here also used to be about a centimetre longer on each leg. I cut them because we're basically just having uh, the heater going all the way up to this plastic and this plastic going all the way up to this plastic with the hose pieces around there just to uh, keep, keep it watertight. Uh, so it's really uh, tight up against that. But if we hold it up or oh, hold it down, you can roughly see how it lines up there. This has all been mocked up in place already. So if this entire tower is going to go at a bit of an angle, it's going to be roughly like that, so we get uh, the inlet of a pump right above the outlet from there. Uh, but since the output of the pump is a bit off, so it has to you know, lean slightly. Uh, these heaters are not supposed to be mounted in this orientation, uh, the data sheet says, but uh, this should be the top uh, because they can gather bubbles in here and really I am going to have probably some issues with bubbles uh, gathering in this so uh, filling the system and burping it is going to be a bit interesting but hopefully we don't have to do it more than once and thankfully this is going to be less than 100 watts of heating so even if we have a bit of a bubble trapped in there if the whole entire heater is not submerged it's not going to make a huge difference because uh, the low power is going to uh, it's not going to, you know, go glowing red hot as if it was running on 230 volts AC. Uh, now these pumps, uh, these are actually extremely powerful pumps. Uh, they will draw about 7 amps on full blast and uh, they like circulate coolant in basically in this, uh, an entire Tesla. Uh, so this thing at 100% is uh, really super mega overpowered and uh, running it at full blast it would just not work at all. Uh, so I've made this little uh, control piece of B, this is just an 80 tiny 13 uh, l I think, uh, which is outputting a 2 hertz PWM output, which uh, is what this pump wants. And uh, you can set uh, the duty cycle of the jumpers. Uh, so we have a total of uh, uh, four combinations from 25 to, I think, 33 uh, percent uh, duty cycle, which... Uh, it's about as low as the pump will go, basically. Uh, below 25, it uh, wants to misbehave. Uh, but yeah, it's time to button this up and uh, turn it into a loop and figure out the expansion vessel. I'm sort of imagining I'll use this thing. That would be basically perfect, but we'll see. And there we have it. Uh, amazingly... Uh, we can just barely squeeze uh, the wiring past it. It is rubbing up against uh, this section here, but it's only providing a bit of pressure in that direction, so hopefully that's not going to be an issue if I poke, plop that out. Yeah. You can see that it sort of rebounds a bit, but all of this is sort of loose and floppy, so uh, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. And we can fit a big connector right on top of the pump between the heater and the outside of a battery box. 
uh, thankfully this connector rotates so we can point that wherever we need it to uh, and I found an expansion vessel so this is some random piece of Tesla uh, coolant uh, line uh, which has a reasonable little a kink on it to uh, go in roughly the right angle so my goal is to fill this up to you know just about here so we have a bit of a bottom and then all of this is going to be our expansion vessel and I'll just plug the end with uh, something uh, and that's going to hopefully uh, be enough for uh, a system this small all right uh, we're moving to uh, actually filling this system up so I decided to go with a disassembly route of most of the filling so I've disconnected the system by the heater here and I've put a funnel in a little whoop-de-whoop -whoop of coolant line there so we can pour down in through the pump and into the lower module yes, so my hope is that we can slowly uh, sort of fill the system up from the bottom until we have it mostly filled and uh, then afterwards we can uh, run the pump and uh, you know, with the system uh, return to its uh, closed con configuration and uh, just sort of let it gurgle itself out uh, over time. Uh, we might have to install some little uh, line loop to be able to squeeze it a bit better. But uh, the most of the filling is going to be just through this funnel until I can sort of notice that there's enough gurgling coming out here to make me afraid of spilling you know, a lot. You know, I have no idea what the actual capacity of the system is, it's not huge. Uh, these modules have very thin coolant lines but it's still a fair amount. So I've mixed up some fairly strong, uh, this should be like minus 40 degree normal coolant glycol. So yeah, I'm just going to start pouring and I'm not going to be holding my nice fancy camera while I do it. Ah, excellent idea time. So. Uh, as, as expected the modules are very restrictive and you can see they basically aren't sucking up any coolant at all so uh, what I did with a bunch of random lines was hook up one of these boat priming pumps and if we really squeeze this bulge you can see that we're sucking a very mild vacuum in the system and the coolant is actually going in. So I've plugged up the uh, normal uh, input hole there and I'm just going to keep on gently pumping this uh, until I'm uh, satisfied I guess uh, or until coolant starts uh, dumping out of the ground over there. This is working so much better than expected as long as I just keep pumping. And that's coolant. So we've now got uh, the system uh, completely full and I need to figure out how to uh, reassemble it without making a huge mess. So I'm going to pour out what's uh, left in this and then I guess I'm going to get some rags and stuff, sort of stuff it in here and do a quick change from this plug to just to get it in, getting it uh, back on there. Uh, it's going to be a bit exciting I think but uh, I'm sure I can manage it without uh, too much chaos. Oh, there we go. We are hooked back together with uh, barely any leakage. I've got a couple of drops over on the edge and maybe one drop on there. I caught basically all the leakage on there. So really a very neat affair. That went uh, way over expectations. So now I'm just going to... Uh, put the towel back and uh, disconnect the pump. There's probably a couple of drops that's going to come, come out of that line there. And uh, then I guess we can just uh, put our plug into the uh, expansion vessel hole. Or we'll lose it forever. Uh, and uh, actually try and run the pump. Exciting. I brought out the pump control, I put some shrink wrap on that to make it a bit more, uh, less haphazard, so this shouldn't be uh, too difficult to wear up and actually give a test dry on. A rather moment of truth is upon us, so we've got the hole beautifully uh, plugged up, uh, and uh, we've got the pump controller hooked up, plugged into the pump down there, and that's all connected up to my uh, contactor main switch. Uh, so, when we flick this switch, 
uh, we are also giving 12 volts uh, to the pump controller and the pump and uh, they should uh, regulate it should use uh, uh, about 600 milliamps for a few moments and then uh, drop it down a bit. So here we go. And we are circulating. Beautiful. So now all we'll need to do is uh, burp the system and uh, then we're definitely done for tonight. Next step is going to be figuring out how to wire the heater to a big battery. Alright, so I've been burping the system for quite a while and I'm finally starting to get uh, most of the air out. Uh, as you can see, I've just sort of taken a long hose as an air hose to uh, uh, just let the uh, air bubble up uh, higher than uh, the reservoir because I'm running the pump actually at full power, it's drawing over 3 amps there. Uh, and if I do that uh, without the extension on, uh, it'll just uh, shoot a water out there, so it's uh, splattering uh, quite a bit up in the tube just because there's so much pressure on this side and uh, so much resist resistance in the battery. But for fun, I just uh, uh, hooked up the heater to see how it'll do, and it's actually working way better than I thought. Uh, we're at full pump power now, and we're sort of slowly warming everything up but uh, the heater is putting out about 70 watts right now and uh, when it was uh, running at a uh, uh, normal uh, fl uh, pump flow rate uh, we had about 20 degrees uh, of output and rising so this uh, heater at this flow rate seems to be pretty much uh, perfectly matched uh, for this application now I'm just uh, shooting water so fast and can't quite keep up to uh, heat the entire system up right now you can see the the two tubes are slowly starting to warm up there as uh, the warm water circulates through them and you can see where the water is splashing in the tube there so that's absolutely beautiful I was not expecting this heater to work this well I was expecting it to choke way more than it is 70 watts is uh, clearly an absolutely adequate amount of power uh, for this application and uh, for reference it's like quite cold it's two three degrees outside I'm steaming my breath so yeah 20 degrees output outlet temp is uh, definitely not bad all right we're pretty much done uh, as far as the plumbing is concerned anyway uh, so uh, I've spent the last uh, several hours uh, purging the system burping it uh, getting all the air aid was uh, Quite a bother. It, uh, it, I just had to run uh, the pump at full speed, let it uh, sort of cavitate and wisp all the little bubbles of air coming through uh, into sort of little bubbles traveling through the system. Uh, and I just uh, let them slowly, slowly uh, pop out of here through, through the long tube. Uh, but now we're actually pretty clear of air. Uh, the system is actually running now uh, and uh, there's really no sound, no bubbling. Uh, if I take, to take it up to full speed it will sort of, you, you can have as a couple of bubbles still trapped in there but it's, it's really not a lot, not a lot at all. Uh, so I'm just going to let that naturally uh, pop into the expansion vessel there. It's going to take just some time in regular usage I think and it's, it's going to sort itself out. Uh, so I think uh, this particular uh, Tesla pump, uh, I found some specs for these which said that use 7 amps, but uh, this one in this application at least uses about 3.2 amps when it's uh, running uh, at full blast uh, under this particular load. I'm not sure it's because the uh, packs are so restrictive that it uh, isn't uh, pumping at its full flow rate, uh, but uh, really maximum seems to be about... Uh, you know 40 ish watts for this particular pump uh, which is good i actually dare run it at full speed it doesn't uh, produce as violent pressures uh, in this system as it did on the bench uh, so that's also good makes purging the system possible basically uh, so beyond that i've uh, uh, actually, as you can see, I've insulated uh, the heater, and that's because I have taped uh, the two ter thermal sensors uh, which go to the Elcat control box uh, to the heater here uh, in order to actually reuse the uh, thermal control system uh, for uh, the vehicle. I'm going to just uh, create a bit of a front end for that uh, because 
this red LED means that uh, the system is calling for heating and when it does it sends 12 volts to this relay. Now there's actually two separate thermal sensors as you can see there are two wires going to the uh, heater and uh, the other one is for uh, the uh, panel here and I think we've actually got enough heat going to yeah we've actually got one bar of uh, heat in the battery uh, which is uh, good uh, it's about seven degrees outside and the battery is considerably warmer than that uh, so I've upgraded the BMS while I've been at it and uh, we now actually have a proper temperature readouts uh, for the pack which are actually live updating so I don't have to press any keys anymore uh, so you can see we have inlet temperatures here outlet temperatures here and uh, even though we're at uh, 7 degrees outside we have uh, about 15 degrees uh, of the first inlet temperature and what will that be 11.98 uh, on the uh, final cell uh, outlet temperature uh, so that's good we're actually achieving circulation we do have a bit of a temperature gradient uh, the reason we have three cells at uh, significantly higher inlet temperature is because they have uh, the uh, input nozzles uh, in parallel uh, so we have uh, like uh, level one or, or a, this is the top level which has the highest inlet temperature and then the outlet temperature goes to the inlet temperature of a lower pack and then goes out so essentially we have these three parallel uh, connections are going to be our input temperature for the entire pack and these three are going to be our outlet temperatures for the entire pack uh, so we do have a decent a thermal drop across the pack and that's because the cells are still uh, cold I haven't uh, pumped enough uh, uh, heat into them to actually warm uh, the cells uh, we're only we are still transferring heat from the coolant to the cells uh, but hopefully uh, that's going to sort of even out over time uh, now I don't actually have any sort of thermal control uh, integrated here the heat is still just uh, hooked straight across uh, the uh, battery uh, voltage so as long as the contact is on the heat is on uh, so we're never gonna actually see a proper thermal regulation of this yet I need to make a front end for the uh, board or sometime far in the future maybe this VMS can uh, output a temp control signal we'll, we'll, we'll see uh, but all in all this is excellent uh, the battery is uh, no longer going to be freezing and hopefully uh, if I cover this up as well uh, it's going to take care of some of the horrible condensation issues I've had uh, just because it's so incredibly humid uh, this time of year in these temperature conditions that uh, the outside of the pack has just been completely dripping with water it looks like someone's gone over it with a spray bottle and you can really see uh, the windows of a vehicle as well it's just very very condensating wet out here uh, so the heat is absolutely for like an open battery design like this this heater is extremely important so that the cells themselves are never the coldest point in the battery uh, the coldest point is what's going to receive the condensation and that's uh, probably going to be like the outside of the case uh, which is good i don't want this thing full of water uh, yeah, uh, the reason I've wrapped uh, this tube in a bit of insulation is just to, to give it some bracing against uh, the sharp metal edge here. Uh, this is probably going to get like squished down by uh, the top case when uh, that gets installed. It might squish like that, uh, but it's just you know a normal coolant hose. It's uh, uh, not gonna. It, it's not bad, and that's going to sort of anchor this uh, top part uh, down as well. If we get a bit of squeezing going on there, so it can't move around. Uh, generally this is going to be very tight and nice because we have, have a big uh, main power connector getting uh, squished in between the heater and uh, uh, the wall there so this is also going to be whoop, let's not squish the pump control so this is all going to be quite tightly uh, just squished up against everything so it doesn't have any room to move around and uh, we, yeah, we're really using most of the space here. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to have to figure something out to go in this space as well. Uh, but because there's going to be at least another control unit coming in to control the heater. Uh, and then the BMS uh, in its final assembly is going to go somewhere around here. So uh, this is really getting 
quite cramped. I also need to uh, pull some proper power feeds to everything. I need to have several separate uh, power feeds coming from over there because we're going to have uh, a 12 volt for the pump, a 12 volt for the BMS, and then a 72 volt for a fuse block in there. Uh, for the actual heater so there's going to be three separate uh, power wires just coming in here and going wherever uh, I, I want to avoid having like fuses and stuff in here because I sort of want to treat the battery box as a black box where you don't you shouldn't have to open this unless it's dire uh, but yeah that's uh, the heating and plumbing system I am quite happy with uh, how this has turned out and I think I'm going to call that, for this video, yeah, cheerio.